So I'll start uh, with uh, whatever we are doing techniques of deception, uh, what we are using in our C CFSL CBI. And uh, I'll show you the techniques and if any doubts, you can please ask me afterwards. So at present, we are doing the, the following techniques which are visible to you. Uh, which is in in which uh, the most important and most uh, known by everybody is polygraph. Then there's layered voice analysis and brain fingerprinting, statement analysis, forensic psychological assessment, and narco analysis. So I'll just uh, tell you one by one um, the working principle and how we do in the we use that in cases. So polygraph, as everybody knows, it uh, commonly every the people uh, the common layman term is lie detector, but actually it, it's not a lie. It doesn't tell you that it is detecting lie or something. It's just a instrument. It records changes in your bodily the physiological variables when a series of question is asked. So it's just a recording instrument. If you say uh, scientific, if you say to the scientific community. Because laymen, they don't understand that uh, they think it is it it will detect lie because many misconceptions they are showing in movies and uh, uh, many movies they are showing it blows light, red light, it will beep if you're telling no lie or something like that. But nothing of that sort happens. It's a tedious process for an examiner to interpret the charts when we get the charts from the generated from the examination. It's just like an EEG chart. So how a doctor has to read the chart and then tell you that uh, the subject has heart issues or no. The same way, once the chart is uh, uh, given by the polygraph, we'll read it and go through it. And then we'll know that the subject is lying on the particular issue or no. So uh, the main basic principle of any lying is psychological and physiological. Okay, so behind every lie, you have psychological thoughts and then it converts into physiology. Like if you want to tell lie, you know that you'll be definitely, when you have to tell lie before, like inside going home, the kid has to lie that he was somewhere outside or studying somewhere. His psychological mind, it'll, it'll you know, carry on that, okay, I have to tell lie, I have to tell lie. And naturally his parameters of physiology, which are BP and other heart rate, they'll increase even he'll start sweating more. So that is how a basic basis of light detection is connected. So it's always both physiological and psychological. So working of polygraph, if we see, uh, we ask a question which acts in verbal, st verbal stimuli and it gets into the brain. And if the question does not have any effect on your body, if the subject is truthful, he knows that he'll not be punished for it. He doesn't have any emotional reaction to it. The body will start continuing its normal physiological pace. But if the question is important enough that the person knows that he, he will get caught or he'll get punishment knowing that he is lying, then only the physiological chain reaction will take place. Like how actually this diagram represents that uh, when we are, we are afraid, we are stressed out, we are lying, our breathing rate, heart rate, BP, muscle tension, stress, all the stress hormones, they start increase flow of hormones. So everything like bowel movement, your stomach upset, you'll feel your skin, you'll feel dilated, you know, constructed and uh, then you'll feel shivering of muscles because muscles tremble and they contract. So you'll feel that you cannot stand anymore. So you want, you want to just sit. That is how your emotional, whatever emotional process you are going through, your body will show it in these kinds of way. So this is how a polygraph also works. When we, the person wants to tell lie, he undergoes stress and his breathing rate, heart rate, blood pressure, everything increases and that is recorded by the instrument. So in polygraph, basically four recordings we are doing. Uh, first is respiration, that is abdominal and chest. So we'll uh, place tubes on abdomen and chest because when we, we do respiration, it is through both the uh, parts which is being recorded. Then can galvanic skin responses, your skin conducts electricity in very minute uh, 
amount when you are stressed out or what we say we are our skin is getting cool our skin is getting hot or it is you know, releasing more uh, uh, perspiration so that is how it is uh, recorded through a galvanometer and then bp and heart rate are recorded through your normal blood pressure cuff uh, how you do in your hospitals so this is how it is this is the galvanic skin response sensor it is placed on the fingers to know your fingers conductivity then this is the normal bp cuff which will record your bp and heart rate both and this is the pneumo tubes which will record they'll expand when you are taking uh, breathe in and breathe out so they'll uh, the chart will be recorded accordingly so this is how a person is made to sit in polygraph with electrodermal electrodes, blood pressure cuff, pneumo tubes, and it will record the four parameters. So basically, how do we do uh, polygraph uh, just procedure in short, I'll tell you. We'll do a pre-test interview of the subject in which we establish rapport with the subject. Uh, in, that is very important part of polygraph. Otherwise, the if the subject is afraid or uh, he's nervous, so he'll uh, he'll not be you no know, easy for you it uh, to conduct polygraph for the subject. Mm -hmm. uh, so and you have to understand his uh, verbal language, what he's talking, and you study his non-verbal behavior also. So everything is assessed. If you think that he is not mentally stable, we, you can do mental status examination or if you want to know his personality, you can do few personality tests or draw men tests like that normally we do. Even uh, some psychological tests like a uh, word association test we do. Uh, so it, it, it depends on person to person and case to case what all we want to conduct during pre-test. So it will be around one hour of uh, pre-test almost one hour it takes to conduct a pretest in which the subject will be very familiar to you because we are counselors we are psychologists the subject should be very easy going with us he should not be afraid if he's a truthful subject because generally truthful subject they'll be very nervous so it that nervousness should not be recorded by the polygraph then after that we'll prepare the questionnaire in which we'll use the language what has been used by the uh, subject mostly like in Hindi also we have many many slangs which is used by the subjects and local languages in Delhi also you have variety of Hindi which has been used a particular word like chaku chura something like that they use very very variety of subject is there then after that question procedure we do we ask question attaching the instrument to the subject and then we get the charts and we do chart interpretation. Then we do post-test interview. If you feel that something is wrong with the subject in particular question, you can just clarify that out. And then finally, we give result and analysis. So the question formats, they are generally three kinds of question relevant. That is direct related to crime under investigation, a relevant question, which is just to normalize the subject, like is your name this, do you stay here, uh, did you study 10th class, or your, is your son named this, something like that, a normal question. And control question, they are comparison question, which we compare to the, with the graph of control question and relevant question are compared and then given the scoring. Like here's one sample questionnaire, which we generally ask. This is modified general questioning technique. Like first two, you see it is irrelevant and relevant. So like this in between irrelevant, we keep so that the subject, if he's uh, like reacting high to it relevant, he becomes normal. And then we ask a relevant question. So this is how a typical uh, graph looks like in polygraph. You can see like first two are the pneumo, chest breathing, stomach breathing. Then uh, blue line is sweat, uh, that is GSR. And then fourth line is BP and heartbeat. So you can see how in the relevant question number five, his BP is increased, his electrical duct activities are increased. And he has taken stop breathing for a few seconds, just mini seconds. And then he has taken high breathing. So like that, after taking three rounds of each questionnaire, 
you will analyze the graph and then do the scoring accordingly. So everybody talks about NHRC guidelines, like do you do, do we follow or no? Because after Sylvie case, it has become very important. So in, in, in NHRC guidelines, it's not very, uh, so many things they have written, but the most important is the concern should be recorded before a judicial magistrate. And uh, the subject should be, should know that whatever, how the, how the, uh, case would be done, how the test is doing. And uh, he should be informed if any medical problem he has, then he, he can like overgo the test, he can refuse the test. So like in Silmi, Silvi case, after that, uh, the polygraph and all, it was uh, like a spread, a uh, rumor was spread very um, large. Uh, this, uh, that uh, it has been banned. Everything they said, narco, brain, everything is being banned by the state in the in Sylvie case. But actually, it is not banned. The main thing which is written in the judgment is nobody should be forcefully subjected to any of the te techniques in question. And according to NHRC guidelines, the subject has to record his consent in front of judicial magistrate. Earlier, we were taking consent in our office respectively, but now after Sylvie judgment, we are taking consent in front of judicial magistrate. That is the only difference what has happened after Sylvie case. Nothing is, nothing is being banned or nothing is being stopped. Like uh, there's no harm in doing any test. And there's no court who has refused that you, should, you cannot do in this test. So now we'll come to our next technique, which is brain fingerprinting. So brain fingerprinting, basically the techniques is based, based on P300. Uh, P, what is P300 is our brain, uh, like if I ask you a question, what is your name? Your brain automatically answers in 300 milliseconds. So that is P300. Okay, whatever brain takes time to answer a particular stimulus or particular question, that is the, how the name has come, P300. So when in 300 milliseconds, when the subject recognizes a familiar information, like if I show you your house, okay? So your brain will, you don't need to say this is my house. Your brain will automatically give a murmur signal, which is an electrical signal, which has been recorded by brain fingerprinting technique. So this is how we know that we can show him the weapon used or the, a man he has murdered or if, if it is a theft, the house he has broken. So if it is, he's a, he's the criminal, his, his brain only will show the murmur signal. If they show it to me, I, my brain doesn't recognize anything about the theft or anything about related to the crime or the particular knife. So my brain is not going to show that signal to the machine. So that is how we'll uh, know that this is a criminal and this is a truthful subject that is that is how we sort it out so at present actually these three techniques are available see technique is same but uh, these are three companies which are in different names like eye cognitive bios and brain fingerprinting so eye cognitive is from brainwave sciences usa bios is from uh, dr mukundan and then brain fingerprinting is from dr farwell that is also from US. So these three techniques at present are present are available in India and uh, different labs across India, they are using different techniques. So how do we do it? We just apply a cap. It's a cap. Uh, and we need a soundproof roof, room for that. And the subject has to wear that cap and he has to remain silent and he has to listen to the probes or if it is a, a visual probe, he has to just see to the probes and he doesn't need to say anything verbally. Like in polygraph, we ask them to say yes or no to a particular question. Like, is your name this? He'll say yes. Do you stay here? He'll say yes. But in brainwave fingerprinting or BIOS, anything, the subject doesn't need to respond verbally. Only his brain normal signal is being recorded by the instrument.
So I think we don't, we'll not go into much technical thing because it will take time. And there are many techniques. So I'll just go through the next technique, which is a forensic psychological assessment, which so since 2010, uh, CBI has started FBI in all important cases. Uh, in US FBI, they have behavior analysis unit and they do such kind of technique to assist in criminal investigation. When a subject comes, they do his behavior analysis and his psychological test and they, they say that, okay, he can be a sus suspect or no. So this that is how we like, you no know, just sort out the large... Uh, um, number of suspects from a large group. In a behavior analysis unit in FBI, they have one psychologist, criminologist, and crime analysis. They together do the interview of the subject and come to a conclusion that he's telling lie or no. So similarly, in India, we are doing a psychologist and criminologist. We are doing it together as a team, and we, do, we give a report that uh, our opinion that he is lying or he's not lying. So how do we do? We have a proper uh, psychological questionnaire. We have behavior analysis interviews, his attitude test, verbal, nonverbal, and then analysis of collated data, whatever the IU has given or other witnesses have given or the how the CDR file, everything you should read before giving any report or opinion formulation. So all these steps, it is like pre-test interview in polygraph. It takes two to three hours for a subject. And then you give your opinion or report that the subject is deceptive or he is truthful. Like few nonverbal behavior, if I want to show you like a, if he is trying to be over friendly, okay, he's trying to show that he's not at all nervous. So that shows that he's a de deceptive person. He gives evasive answers. Like he'll say, why I should tell you, I should, I am not, uh, no, like, like, no, I, I don't want to answer you or something like that. Or he gives like, no, very deceptive answers. Then he's uncooperative to you. And he behaves like lighthearted. But generally, if, if he's a truthful subject, all the subjects who come for analysis or for uh, to CBI or any investigative agencies, they'll definitely be, scared but scared in a different way not in a way that they'll be caught because it is a general nervousness of a person even even if they call me for any investigation i'll be nervous like what i've done i've not done anything why they're calling so like that he a uh, general uh, truthful person should be a little bit scared not that he shall be very lightheartedly laughing with you if he's trying to laugh off like you no know, fake laugh and all he's definitely a fake person or he's he's a deceptive person then his bodily movement and overall deceptive appearance all this we see in a person and then we give our report like uh, nowadays many body language courses are available books are available so if you see and if you if you read them you will know many body languages, but being a psychologist and being an investigator, we come across so many people and we have a knowledge that how, behave, how he behaves because it depends on person to person and culture to culture. Okay, in India, it is different culture and US, UK, they, are, they have different culture. Ladies, they behave differently. Gents, they behave differently. So you cannot read a US book and uh, no, apply that culture or body language to India. Okay, so that have, you have to keep in mind that you should not apply any body language culture because in villages they behave very differently. You, so you cannot think that he's telling deceptive and a, a polished criminal or white collar criminal, they behave very polished way and they wear very proper clothes. So that doesn't mean that he is no truthful subject. So there are many things like, you no, know, how we know that a subject is deceptive or truthful. Uh, there are many like his sentence telling, uh, if uh, continuously he says why I should tell you, or he uses personal coding, he misses, uh, like, you no, know, he, he just tells you general statement every time he repeats the same thing. He's not expressing his real feeling that I was being really, uh, this is really a bad phase for me. It has spoiled my days. It has spoiled my career, everything. So 
a truthful subject will generally do that all he'll he'll try to share everything and he'll think that this is the opportunity you they have got to exclude themselves from the case so they'll definitely use the opportunity very well and generally de uh, deceptive they'll not try to attach to you they'll be they'll be always distant to you they'll not uh, mingle more because they know that you're a psychologist you're reading their body language so they'll not try to move more they'll try to fix eye uh, contact more because uh, it has been said uh, by many people that eye contact is a great way to know that subject is deceptive or truthful so nowadays everybody because it's like no internet everything they know that eye contact is very important and how they should behave an educated criminal they read everything before coming to us so that is why we take time to talk to them such that after a time because even if you are like doing uh, some act or some act something they, it will not be for long okay sometime during the week moments you'll definitely come out with some real you know what you want to talk then in this uh, analysis itself we do statement analysis which is reading it between the lines like one two three lines are there so whatever is written in the in the line that is apart from like no physical meaning but we have to conclude our own meaning what he wants to try to tell us okay so what all it does it detects concealed information missing information and it tells you whether the information provided is true or false so how do we do we take a first we take a pure sent, a statement of the subject every statement has three parts pre incident incident and pro, post incident so the structure and the content of the written statement is then studies and uh, it is developed by color coding they have system like noun we noun verbs everything we do color coding and then we analyze the statement of the subject which we obtain and then we give a, our opinion that this statement he is he is trying to hide here he is trying to tell deceptive here or he is trying to like no fake here so all this thing we give in, a, in our opinion so we have seven scan criteria in statement analysis which first is denial out of sequence information change in language missing times and links spontaneous correction structure of the statement as i have told you before pre incident incident and post incident so in this very important is like pre incident a subject has to write pre incident means he is writing about himself so he has to write very short about himself if he is trying to make that 20% to 50% like i am son of this and that i have studied this i have done phd in this i work for this company and all this he is trying to boast there itself you have to understand that he is trying to deviate the topic and he is not a truthful person then comes the incident part mostly deceptive people they try to shorten the the incident part they they'll make it to 20% because they don't want to describe it more the in in fact post post incident part part will be described more by the truthful person that what they have undergone police harassment or family reputation has gone bad everything like that but the deceptive person never describes any post incident part that is uh, from our experience also and it has been like no it it is given by sapir which uh, which says this and we have studied many statements so that uh, we have we know that uh, once we read the statement we'll know that the statement is truthful or deceptive then lack of commitments so all these things i think if i start describing each point it will take time so advantage of statement analysis and assessment is like in polygraph and other techniques you need to take uh, like no you have to record the permission in front of uh, judicial magistrate and you need some instruments like other things and are uh, like a proper room everything should be available but assessment and statement analysis you can do it anywhere okay any room it doesn't uh, it is very cost effective you just need paper and pen 
and you can tell that the person is lying or no. So that that nowadays CBI we are using it in initial stage of investment investigation, uh, where we have long number of suspects. So we'll just sort it out like from twenty to five suspects. We'll sort it out, and then we can when we go forward for the other investigation. But otherwise, if you go on twenty suspects, it is a very long process and it takes time, and you cannot like no wait till that when you investigate all 20 suspects so these are very easy methods for detecting deception and they are all collaborative evidences and there have been uh, like uh, many in instances where these evidences have been uh, like uh, judicial they have said that okay you go and do this test then we'll see further that the subject will give the bail accordingly. So the bail has all, also been granted uh, depending upon the polygraph and uh, assessment and substatement analysis report. And you can uh, like verify the veracity of the statement of anything like suspect, accused, witness, complainant. Otherwise, if you go to complainant and say you need to prove that you are telling yeah, your complaint is true or no, he'll definitely know. He'll bang on you. So it's not easy in India. Our witnesses also, they say, you are necessarily harassing me because I have witnessed something like that. So it is better to do such small tests and you know, you'll know, come to know that. Then further on, based on this test, you can go forward and tell the court that these in on this test, they are telling lie. So we want to go for other instrumental test. Now I'll come to layered voice analysis, uh, which is uh, the which it's a new instrument we have acquired from Israel, and uh, technology is based on uh, like same psycho psychological or physiological stress in human voice. It is through voice actually, and it is a software based on algorithm, and it is independent of any voice. Like we have done cases in Tamil, Telugu, Kannada. Hindi, Uriya, every all the languages we have done, and it was very easy for us to detect that the subject is deceptive or no. And it's non-intrusive. You don't. It's just a software, so you just need a recorder. And if the subject is feeling uh, uneasy, you can just record on your mobile, and then keep the recording in the software, and you'll come to know that the subject is deceptive on particular sentence, or he's telling the truth. So if you see, it is like a, just a polygraph. It's it's a polygraph uh, kind of machine which will tell you depending on the on the voice that the subject is telling lie or he is telling the truth. But it's a very sensitive instrument, so it uh, it is easily influenced by like if background noise is coming, your fan or background some uh, traffic is there or somebody is honking, telephone noise, then actually the voice cannot be analyzed. So you have to be very careful while recording for the, generally because of our investigators, they say we have recorded this voice when we were interrogating and you please just get it analyzed. But that is not possible because it's very sensitive instrument. It will measure very small, even paper, if you're turning while recording the voice, it will record that also. And it will come to a, like it will become a noise. So the audio quality has to be very good. So basically how it works, when we are generating our speech, at the same time, interpret, interference of emotion also happens in our brain. And then only our expression comes out through voice. Like when we call our you know, kids, like lovingly, how we call, we don't think that no, we have, we have to use such voice, okay? So it comes automatically because of interference of emotion during our generation of speech, and they both happen simultaneously. And uh, LVA system has two analysis tool. One is online, which is like a very short cycle analysis. It records only sixteen parameters of emotions. Uh, but you can just, it's real-time analysis, like when you are doing interrogation of the suspect first time, you can just sort it out online. It 
comes like real time in your laptop that in this sentence he's telling truth truth he's, he's telling stressed out he's feeling confused or something like that and offline mode is like after you record it then you put it into the software and it's a full psych analysis it records like almost 30 more than 30 emotions But basic three sensations, which is recorded by LVA is excitement, confusion, and stress. So excitement is like truthful uh, kind of sensation, which will tell that, okay, subject is really excited that you are, you are asking him question and he'll be like, no, uh, free that, okay, he has told the truth. And confusion will be very useful when witness is really confused, but he says, no, no, I have seen the man walking through there. So that confuse, if it is con coming confused, then you can make out that he is really not sure and you cannot believe that witness. Similar way, stress. Stress will be there for all the people like truthful or deceptive, but the level of stress decides that where is the deception there. Like the following messages come in uh, like in sentences like uh, truthful may if you see the screen, it is high anticipation, stressed, excited, not sure, high tension. If these messages are coming in particular sentence, like I went there, I did not do this. So if short, short uh, in this uh, sentences, if the following messages are coming, then you can make sure, okay, he is not a deceptive person. But if intensive, like level two or level three messages are coming in particular sentences, then you have to see that he is a deceptive person and then you can take him to polygraph or other test or you can just report on this basis and IO can further investigate into the matter. Then narco analysis, which is the most talked about uh, technique always because uh, it is very basically you in uh, the subject is administered barbiturates or uh, sodium pentothal. What it does is they are just uh, like barbiturates. They lower the inhibitions of the subject and the subject freely shares information and feelings with you. Like you people must have seen like narco doing being done to most of the terrorists and uh, like uh, Arushi case and all. So in India, the narco test is done by a team of uh, anesthetologist, a psychiatrist, a clinical or forensic psychologist, an audio videographer and supporting nurse. It is always done in a hospital setting and the forensic psychologist in that will prepare the report about the revelations which will be accompanied by the CD of the audio video recording. We, just, we, just, we are not going to analyze anything. We are just stating in our report that what all he has revealed or what all statement he has given to the other questions. So drug used is truth. It's a truth serum is a colloquial name for uh, any psychoactive drugs, which are used to like, no, uh, obtain subjects in information from their brain. So mostly like ethanol also is being used. Like if you get him drunkard, he'll come out with all you no know, blabbering of whatever he has done scolopamine and amobarbital. There are many medicines which are being used for this technique. So how we do is the subject is uh, injected drug by me and he's, make, he's made into semi-conscious state. In this state, it, it is very difficult for him to you know, to lie or uh, to manipulate his answer. So his answers generally will be restricted to facts he, or he's already aware of. And the dose which is given is independent on the person's sex, age, health, and physical condition because a wrong dose can result in his coma or even death. The subject actually generally, if you have seen videos in YouTube, he will not answer himself. You think that, no, you have injected injection and he'll answer himself. No, no, it's not like that. You have to ask him questions like, uh, where did you go before this? Whom did you call? who all are you know, associated with you in this crime. And he'll be in semi-conscious uh, state and you have to 
like no listen to him very carefully whatever he is answering because sometimes he'll just blabber the answer and it will not be very clear in like sound or speech that is why it is recorded also so that if you are unable to read at that time or you are unable to understand the sentence whatever he is speaking that time you can just go through the recordings once again so that is all for today these were the techniques we are using in cfsl cbi uh, for this detection of deception if anything anybody wants to ask you can just please most welcome